the choice game. Now they got this weird story to share. Now it's not really a normal story, more like one of them campfire horror tales that you tell to scare your friends and stuff. And you can call it a ritual, I guess, and the most popular name for it is the choice game. So you probably want to hear about this ritual. Now for starters, the items you need to play it is this. You need a port, you know, a, a cell phone, a piece of food, whatever kind of item of food, a pencil or a pen, a sheet of paper, and any kind of animal except for a stuffed animal. And you should find some nearby woods or something. And um, as far as I know, that's the only place where you can do this thing. And it's really important to also note that for the most part, you can go back at any time. I like the mother stories. Now, once I step inside, though, you can never go back. <laughs> but nah, this story ain't like that. You can know you, you have the freedom to go back whenever you can man because uh you know and I, I know you know the cliche is when you get into these rituals you know just oh you know, went to the dark side but not this one you know now this heads up though if you like animals I recommend that you don't you know you might want to you know rethink this thing though know. uh you know what I'm saying so but anyway um uh, you know, if you got your, don't do this, you know, don't bring your little dog, yeah, right? <laughs> maybe go find a squirrel or something that you don't care nothing about now, unless you're a psychopath, and, you know, somebody listening to this probably is, but anyway, to start off, take your phone now, and I want you to call a specific number, now, you can only do this in certain countries, so, you know, if, um, your country don't have you know, if your country ain't on the list, then you actually lucky, okay? <laughs> now, for the UK, you call 01782-844-111. You pause it, rewind it if you need to, and write that down. Now, for the US, call 1719-596-7000. All right? For Italy. Call 3906-588-0516. Now for Norway, call 21090480. Now once you connect it, you hear nothing but quietness, nothing but silence. And you'll need to take the first step by saying a certain phrase. The one in this example, we're going to do it in English because, you know, I speak English, man. Well, I speak uh, some version of Midwestern, urban, southern English or whatever. But translations can work, you know, just interchangeably or whatever. Now, you can speak whatever you want into it, man. You can speak alien. You just use the translation at work, all right? Now, the phrase is... If you kindly allow me, let me pass freely. And that's all you need to say, nothing else. Now after that, you're gonna hear a sharp screech and it'll be static and the number gonna disconnect. And that's how you know that you did it right. Now otherwise, you did it wrong. And you called a local pizza place or something. <laughs> so let's say you did it right, good work. You about to commit an atrocity. Pat yourself on the back. Put down the phone and write some words onto the piece of paper. Now, the words you write can be anything. Scribble down your favorite food, your favorite movie or whatever. You know, whatever come to your head. Like you a bored kid in school. Um, with a pencil and a dictionary. Or maybe write a story to send the hood whore. It's your choice. It'll work. Now you put the paper somewhere else and then go fetch that food item. Now place the food in the middle of the paper and wrap the paper around the food. And with that done, get an animal. You know, like I said, a squirrel or something like that, man. But go the easy route and use uh, somebody's pet. But, you know, that's only for uh, the weirdos. <laughs> you know, any animal will work. If you can find a bird, use that. Well, don't matter. 
Then you need to go into the woods with the food wrapped in paper and an animal with you. Inside the woods will be a small, pristine shack. And now this shack just came out of nowhere. Trust me, when you go out in the woods, it'll be there. You ain't never noticed it before. Maybe you even walked all over the spot where it was the day before. But too bad you have now. Walk into the shack and knock on the wall four times. And an old man, kind of short, bald in hair, wrinkled face, he gonna walk through the entrance into the shack. He gonna be real nice and polite when you meet him. And greet him back. He gonna strike up a conversation. And you gotta go along with it. Now at some point in the conversation, they'll bring up the paper in your hand. They say it look kind of weird. They'll ask you if, you can, if they can eat it. Since they knew what item you put in it. Give it to them. And they'll just bite through the thing like a marshmallow. Choose not to, and they'll just continue the conversation until you get bored. If you went through with giving them the paper, they'll keep talking and then bring up the animal. And they'll ask to look at it and inspect it. Now give it to them, and they'll open up his mouth and look inside. Then they open his mouth further and further until his arms start flailing and jaw breaks. They'll dig their hands into the walls of your animal's mouth and tear it in two, all while maintaining that polite, friendly smile. Now, if you refuse, like, you know, someone who ain't crazy, you know, anybody who ain't crazy will refuse, but if you a little crazy and you go along with it, the person will get angry and leave the shack. You will then be free to leave as well, and you can know them, you know, let the little dog survive or whatever, a little squirrel, whatever you take with you. But if you went through with these two things, they'll hand you the animal and tell you to look closely at the throat. When you do, you're going to see this strange, like, captivating vision somehow playing inside the throat. And it varies from person to person on what the vision is. Some people say they see new colors they never seen before. Others say they see beautiful figures dancing back and forth. Some might even see dead relatives. Look back after this, and you're going to see that they're going to be gone. Now, follow this carefully. Failing to do so will make you end up hurting yourself, or even worse. Exit the shack, but when you're doing so, only take four steps. This is easy for people who decided to be right next to the door. But if you're at the other side of the shack, <laughs> boy, you better be praying to God, man. Now, when you exit, you'll find a close friend near the door. You could have seen them every day at school, and they could just be somebody you know over the internet that don't really matter, though. They'd be standing there smiling. And they'll kind of, you know, try to usher you inside, but once you in, the door you came through will disappear. Ain't no going back now. The friend you were with is suddenly the person that resided in the shack, still bearing that godless, polite smile. And they'll try and talk to you again, mentioning the animal on your face. Please don't talk to them, because if you proceed further with the conversation, they're asked to inspect you. And I hope you remember how they inspected the animal. Right? So respond, and you'll be hit with a strong blow of ironic karma. You will fall to the same fate that the same animal did. And from there, you're dead. So you have to ignore them for a few minutes, and after that, they'll lead you by the hand into a room filled with lost friends and family members. Some probably will be dead, some you ain't seen since you was younger, and you'll be asked which ones to save and which ones to kill. The dead ones, well they dead, so it don't really matter, right? But the alive ones will make you sweat, and leave you decide on what brought you to this point. And when you choose one person to save, another will die in horrible ways. And in a day, a day or two, you be getting calls from your relatives about how your little cousin was found filled up with holes. But how Uncle Perry came to quicken fatal, painful disease. It's going to be all your fault. You'll be the one that killed him. You'll be a murderer. Now just try and live with yourself afterwards. Most people kill themselves out of regret. 
And after that, the person you save will encounter great fortune in a whole bunch of different ways. They might become rich, make the next, you know, best thing, or even just get the girl they want, you know. Now for the dead ones, you may have saved, well, they won't die. Their face will twist and warp in such a way that they never die. And if you say how sad it is, Richie couldn't be here after he died of cancer at a family reunion, they'll cock their head and just point out that Richie is right here. Right over there, eating some rib tips. <laughs> and you'll fall asleep and wake up in your house, and it's over. Now some people might wonder, why am I telling you this? How do you know this? Well, to be honest, all I'm going to say is... If you think you bad, go ahead and call that number.